Thank you, Kurt. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, so, hi, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Martin Dobiash. I work for Lutra Consulting. Uh, does this work? Um, and this one? This one? Ah, okay. That's full work. So, uh, just very briefly about um, our company. We do services around uh, open source GIS, mainly in QGIS, so anything about development, support, training, and so on. Uh, more recently, we also deal with uh, mobile data collection, so if you are interested into that, uh, check out uh, merchantmaps.com, or you can also come and join us in the, in the booth that we have um, downstairs. Uh, so, let's talk about the QGIS and 3D, so it's a really quite broad uh, area to talk about. Um, QGIS for a long time existed really just a, as a 2D viewer and editor and uh, analytical tool for data, but then like since 2018 we have uh, built the like, uh, simple 3D viewer for, for your data. Um, just like QGIS is b uh, based on uh, Qt framework, uh, we have decided to like base all this 3D stuff on the Qt 3D framework. Um, we uh, started to support all sorts of uh, layers, so you can use vectors, thrusters, mesh, uh, and point clouds in in the 3D. Uh, just to uh, wet the appetite a bit, so. This is something that you can do nowadays with the um, uh, QGIS 3D views. So this is a point cloud uh, data set with uh, some classification. It's uh, one of the hilly areas in, in Slovakia. Uh, this is another one coming from mobile uh, data collection from some uh, LiDAR survey. This one you can see there's also nice uh, RGB um, rendering to it. Um, and uh, this one is, um, uh, shows the animation framework we have in the 3D views where uh, you can set a bunch of uh, keyframes and uh, you will get the animation that uh, you can... Uh, uh, you Shall I use the microphone? Yeah. Alright, uh, yeah, so um, this is uh, point, cloud, uh, point Cloud of uh, Melbourne. All right. So when I started about point clouds, let's uh, continue with them. Uh, so we did uh, two uh, crowdfunding campaigns, one in 2020, the other one in 2021. Uh, they were fortunately both uh, successful. So we have done them uh, in collaboration with uh, two more companies, with uh, North Road from Australia and from, uh, with uh, Hobu from uh, the US. <laughs> Uh, and the initial results of our efforts were uh, available in the QGIS 318. Uh, so, what can you do um, um, with point cloud? Oh, sorry. Um, first of all, the, about the challenges of the point cloud data. Why, why can't we just use ordinary point cl um, uh, point layers uh, as like we use with uh, vectors? The problem is that it's uh, typically massive amounts of data, so we are talking about billions or even trillions of points from uh, LiDAR surveys. And the other thing is that uh, the common formats that are used for interchange, like LIS, LIS or LIZ, they are not really built for uh, this kind of 2D, 3D viewing, where you need to just uh, access some small amounts of data um, rather than just like getting everything. So data needs to be reorganized and uh, this complicates things, but uh, we have managed to uh, uh, sort it out with the uh, help of uh, friends from Hobu. Um, with that, uh, also the work we have done is based on the library called uh, Poodle or Vidal, depends how you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's something similar like uh, GDAL is for um, uh, rasters, this one is for point clouds, uh, plenty of uh, drivers for reading and writing. Um, there are a bunch of uh, filters that you can apply to the data to get um, quite uh, complicated pipelines to, to deal with uh, point cloud data. If you haven't tried uh, Poodle yet, like I really uh, recommend you to give it a try. So what you can do with uh, point clouds in uh, QGIS, so there is a dedicated 
point cloud layer, um, you can drag and drop some LIS, LIZ file. Um, if you are lucky uh, and the um, data set is classified, you will get uh, something like that, uh, like this uh, by default. On the right side, you can see the classification um, uh, values. You can turn them on and off. There are a couple of more renderers uh, to use. So you can use the attribute by ramp, where you would uh, pick which attribute you want to use. So for example, here the Z attribute, so the elevations. Um, uh, or you could use the, if, if the point cloud is um, colorized, you can use the RGB layer. So this is the usual 2D view. Uh, now, of course, there is also the 3D uh, support for point clouds. What I really like about this is that like, if the point cloud is dense enough, uh, it all merges into like one surface, and only when you are getting like really close, then you start to see the individual points. Um, what I also suggest to everyone when they are using um, uh, point clouds in the 3D view to enable the IDOM lighting effect. So on the left side, it's um, uh, the view without the IDOM lighting, and you can see on the right, it adds some shading and adds some silhouettes, and you, like, you can really see much more detail of your uh, data. So, and now I would like to talk about like, what we have done uh, since the last uh, crowdfunding campaign uh, in the last uh, couple of months. So let's continue with uh, brand new features in the recent versions. So this one that's coming to QG 3.28, uh, there is item lighting effect also in 2D. So um, if you have this uh, top-down view, you can see much more detail, uh, which is uh, great. Uh, for 2D, we also added the uh, ordered rendering. So by default, uh, when you um, get point cloud rendering, uh, the points are uh, displayed in arbitrary order. But you can now switch also to uh, like the bottom to top or top to bottom ordered rendering, which is a bit slower. But as you can see, like the, you get uh, better quality. Of course, this is something to worry about only in the, th uh, in the 2D case, because in 3D, you always get like the, the proper uh, ordering. Then we improved the classified renderer. So before you would be getting like all the hard-coded classes, like some uh, that you wouldn't be worried about at all. Now we only show you the classes that are really uh, present in your uh, data. We also show the uh, non-standard classes, you know, like here 64, 65 uh, or so. Uh, and uh, on the right side, you can see we also show the percentage of uh, each class, so uh, you can use that for something. Uh, next thing in uh, 3.26, we have added uh, the option to filter point clouds based on arbitrary uh, expressions. So you can use one attribute to like uh, the elevation is more than something, or you can even combine them together. Uh, there is a simple user interface where like, you also see some basic statistics about the um, uh, range of the values and uh, so on. Uh, the next uh, thing is that you are able to uh, synchronize the 2D and 3D style. So the 2D and 3D rendering, they can have completely different way of uh, rendering things. And, but um, it is usually quite annoying that like, you, you set up the rendering for 2D, and now you need to do the same changes for, for the 3D view. So uh, that's why now we default to the, like, uh, follow to the symbology for the 3D render. So unless you really want to have different rendering, um, you will uh, be getting the same uh, experience. Um, we have also added uh, the support to render point clouds as uh, surfaces. So there will be if you enable this uh, feature, uh, you will get uh, like on-the-fly triangulation of uh, the points, so that um, even if you um, like zoom in really closely, uh, you will not see the individual points, and it will be just uh, one uh, surface. This is quite good to do. Like that, if you filter just uh, ground points and you do the uh, triangulation only on ground points, it's uh, quite a nice result. 
something that's coming to 328 is uh, the export of uh, point clouds. So we will be able to similarly uh, to vector layers or raster layers, right click on the layer, click export, pick uh, which attributes you want to export, uh, extend uh, some elevation range, maybe some extra filtering and you will be either uh, able to create a LAS file or um, there are vector formats and I think uh, DXF uh, as well. So um, the next bit I would like to talk about is uh, the cloud optimized point clouds uh, so, or COPSI. Um, so this is a uh, idea that was like, uh, developed by uh, the Hobu company uh, to, to use a similar approach uh, to the cloud optimized geotiffs um, to, to point clouds. So um, the idea is that you would take the ordinary LAZ uh, file um, and just like um, do some small improvements uh, to it so that it has some internal organization of the data so that it is possible to um, like get the like uh, sp uh, spatial queries uh, very efficiently. So that internally, the, rather than having like one huge bag of points, you are getting points that are nicely organized in some uh, levels of detail. So you can then pick like just uh, the part that you, uh, that you need. So um, it's uh, uh, really nice. And um, we have implemented the support for COPC in QGIS. So uh, now, whenever you uh, load uh, some uh, point cloud uh, data file into QGIS, uh, it will get indexed into this uh, COPSI file, uh, which we will then be uh, showing to you. Um, and we support both uh, local and remote uh, COPSI files. So um, uh, if you have um, uh, some remote server where you host the uh, data, you can just uh, point QGIS to the URL of, uh, of the COPSI file and you, uh, QGIS will use the range requests to only um, request the pieces of data that are really needed rather than having to download the full, I don't know, 50 gigabytes of uh, data of the, of the point cloud. So uh, that's useful. So here you can see uh, this screenshot actually uses the EPT uh, format. Uh, which is slightly different, but the, um, the, the principle is the same as, uh, as with um, uh, COPC. So uh, this is really useful, like the, as the point clouds are always large, to put them somewhere uh, on the server and you don't need to uh, keep them on your local drives. Um, okay, so I will uh, stop for now uh, for a little bit about uh, point clouds and talk about some other uh, 3D related improvements. The um, one that is really lovely is the elevation profile tool. So now you are able to uh, pick a line string, draw it on your uh, map canvas, and uh, there is a new doc widget in QGIS uh, with the elevation profile that you will get. Uh, on the right side you can see like how the um, configuration of the um, uh, elevation related data is for, for raster. Um, you can like, customize the styling and customize so, so many things. It works with uh, point clouds as well. So here is another uh, cross-section line and you can see uh, that uh, like you get uh, overall view. You can go deeper into it, zoom into the um, profile and you can configure the, um, the offset that is being taken uh, from, the, from the main line uh, to like, re um, decide how, uh, how many points you will uh, get. Um, and the elevation profile tool, it has plenty of functionality. So uh, the, uh, I, yeah, it supports rasters, it supports vectors, point clouds, even uh, the mesh layers. Um, and the uh, like sheer amount of configuration is uh, amazing. You can identify data, measure distances or elevations, so, uh, and you can even um, export profiles. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, uh, there is a great video from, from the main developer, Niall Dawson. Uh, it's like one hour 
deep dive into all the things that it can do. Of course, I've forgotten to say uh, it uh, automatically uses like all the um, elevation layers. So um, if you use, for example, vectors and rasters, uh, it will uh, show them all at once. Um, cool. And then uh, there are a bunch of like 3D view improvements uh, that we did. So one of these is uh, the support for semi-transparent vector objects. So now for the polygons, there is one more slider where you can pick the opacity of, um, um, of the color and you will get this kind of um, um, semi-transparent rendering. Uh, what's coming to 3.28 is ambient occlusion, which is especially useful, I think, for, uh, for point clouds where, again, um, it will help you to get much better uh, depth perception. So just to get a rough idea, so the top left image, that one is with like no extra eff um, effects. And the top right is the one with uh, eye dome lighting enabled, so you can see the silhouettes uh, of, uh, of the data. Uh, the bottom left is uh, just the ambient occlusion, and um, bottom right which I like the most is the combination of both effects where like you can see both the silhouettes and um, like quite a lot of detail for example of the, the trees and so on. Uh, then uh, in 324 we added the option to dock or undock the uh, 3D map view so um, before it was usually just some small window somewhere. Now you can undock it and maximize it on the whole screen so you can um, appreciate quite large uh, renders. Um, you can manage the 3D views. So uh, before, when you closed uh, the 3D view, like all your configuration was uh, gone. Uh, so now that sorted, uh, you can keep all the 3D views uh, in your project and you can hide them and uh, show them later when, when needed. Uh, you can synchronize uh, 2D and 3D views since uh, 3.26. Uh, so you can set that either like 2D view should uh, follow the 3D view or the 3D view should follow the 2D view. Uh, and there is another option that in 3D view uh, we would be showing this kind of like blue um, uh, rectangle of uh, like what the 3D view is uh, looking at. Uh, there are a bunch of more uh, 3D improvements, but um, those are maybe minor to uh, talk about. Um, so the question is like, uh, what's next? Like we are now more or less done with like implementation of all the features that have promised uh, to uh, to the funders. Also, uh, like if there are any. Um, people or organizations that have uh, pledged to the crowdfunding, I uh, want to say again big thank you uh, for, for supporting this work. Uh, and so what's next? Uh, the, the rest of the features uh, that we have implemented are, will be coming in QGIS 3.28 in uh, this October. And the good news is that uh, we are going to try to run uh, another crowdfunding campaign. So. Uh, there is like a never-ending list of features that like we want to add and like improve in either point clouds or the 3D data. So um, we would like to do it, I guess, sometime in September, October time. Uh, uh, yeah, stay stay in touch with us with our uh, Twitter or blogs, uh, where we'll be publishing some uh, news about it. Uh, there are a couple of topics that we would like to focus on. So uh, one of them is to further improve the elevation profile tool. So uh, to have things like uh, support for print layouts or um, uh, things like that. Uh, then we would also like to look more into the analysis side of the, of the point cloud support. Right now we only support viewing of point clouds, which is fine, but uh, like people also want to analyze things. So to take all, uh, all or at least some of the goodies that the Poodle library offers and uh, provide them straight to the processing toolbox so you are just a few clicks away from 
tiling your data to, I don't know, um, thin the data to reproject uh, or create some derivative products like uh, raster DEMs or anything like that. Uh, then uh, we would like to also improve support for like really large data sets uh, because all coin clouds are typically large data sets. Uh, so uh, normally uh, you have like a list of files uh, in a single directory and right now you just need to go and like uh, add every uh, file separately to like uh, see them in one uh, one project so we would uh, and then you need to style each of these layers separately and it's like uh, quite annoying so um, what we would like to have is some kind of uh, way of saying like all these files in this uh, directory it's just one data set treat it as uh, one data set it w so it will be just one point cloud layer and we will deal with uh, like loading the individual files as needed and indexing them and so on. Uh, and finally, yeah, to further improve the 3D map views, like um, we, we know that uh, there are still plenty of things that are, uh, that really need improving from measuring things to even like the camera control and uh, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's like the fourth uh, main topic to, to deal with. So these are the ideas so far, but we are open to more suggestions. So if you have anything that uh, you would like to see there, then like feel free to come and talk to me or to my colleagues uh, either today or uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll love to hear uh, what you think. And that's it. So thanks for your attention. Okay, so we have some questions from Venulus. First one, do you consider crowdfunding campaigns to be a sustainable way of funding open source development? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess yes. Um, to, to some, uh, some things, um, we know that we can run crowdfunding campaign for it and it will work. For some things we know that like, people would never um, pledge the money for it, even though we really need that, like something needs to be done. So, um, but generally, yeah, I think like we have run, I don't know, maybe five or six uh, crowdfunding campaigns for adding new features to QGIS and uh, it, it worked, so I hope so. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, not the, it's not the way that like, everything should be done through crowdfunding campaigns? No, but uh, it's definitely like one more piece to the puzzle uh, to get stuff uh, done. Okay, um, is there any plan of implementing stereo digitizing or photogrammetry in QGIS? Uh, probably at some point. So uh, the thing is, yeah, people, people also like to ask about uh, yeah, editing of point clouds and so on. So I've been keep uh, like pushing this in front of us uh, because it's going to be a lot of work uh, and not not just editing of point clouds it's also editing of uh, vector layers in 3D and so and so on so um, eventually yes but um, maybe in a few years time when we are really happy with all the viewing capabilities and we can move to the next stage Another popular question, uh, would it be hard work to support poetry format? Mm, not really, like the, the poetry format is in some way similar to uh, what we use in uh, either COPC or the EPT format, so uh, possibly yes, but maybe um, I would turn around the question whether um, like uh, um, you know, because the poetry format is really supported just by poetry, so um, it's maybe better to think about like if uh, poetry can like um, more focus on uh, supporting the uh, formats that are, let's say, like interoperable, yeah, 
and more standard. Yeah. Uh, here's one. How about performance on a poor PC, a slow PC? Sorry? How about performance on a poor PC? Um, yeah, uh, it's poor. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, it's all about yeah, uh, like how much memory you have, how much, how good is the graphics card. Uh, I'm I'm sure like there are also plenty of things that we could improve to like uh, use less memory and make things faster. Um, but I guess like every laptop that you have nowadays that is not like 10 years old uh, should be able to run this uh, quite quite well. And for things like point clouds, you can also set the things like uh, budget of a number of points to, to show. So if uh, your computer is slow, you can set I don't know, to show at most 1 million points and not 5 million points, and it should be much faster. And there's a question here about migrating to QT6. Um, did you already, have you done any work on QT6 migration? for the 3D part? Uh, not myself, but actually uh, Niall Dawson, he has been doing uh, Qt6 uh, porting for like other parts of uh, QGIS, and it went better than he expected, so he also ported the um, uh, 3D library. So um, I would say it's uh, done. Great. Um, <laughs> This is, this, uh, this is about um, crashes. So QGIS 3D crashes a lot. Any strategy to improve overall quality? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, there are several things to address, I guess. Um, one thing is that um, like with uh, uh, all these like 3D and OpenGL, uh, there is always the problem that there are like, different vendors of the graphics card and they interpret uh, things uh, slightly differently in, in the drivers. So while like on my computer something runs perfectly fine, uh, on someone else's the graphics driver will say like, no, 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 this is, uh, this is not something I'm going to run. So um, it's, it would be probably more about like uh, other people coming to me and showing like these uh, crashes and I could try to see like, uh, if we can fix it um, and yeah, the, improve the um, coverage with uh, automatic testing that will also help as usual. So that's everything from Venulus. Um, do we have any questions from the floor? Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Thank you.